Hey, everybody. You're now tuned into the Blackout, shining a light on black excellence, activism, and culture. Blacked out by the majority on Afro Vibes Radio, the number one online internet radio station with your girl, Tequila. Today's special guest is one of my favorite people, <laughs> the general manager of Amazing 102.5 and political candidate running for Houston City Council at large, District Number 5, yes. Miss Catherine Flowers Garcia. How are you doing? Thank you so much for Good. coming back again. Thank you for having me. I mean, this Absolutely. is amazing. Always being fly and dapper <laughs> with the outfits. So last time you came here, we talked a little bit about some of the policies that you want to put in place mm -hmm. and what all that you had coming up. So what has been the progress since then? Well, it's early voting has started. We're actually in our second week of early voting. Uh, it ends November 1st. And so people have a chance from 7 to 7 to go out to 88 different locations and cast a vote. Uh, so my focus has been making sure that we have people um, voting because it the voting is such a low rate right now. We're going to sleep on this and we won't have any representation. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's my concern that uh, even look at it nationally. And we're all sick about talking about the president and all this other stuff. But the truth is some of us have to be involved mm -hmm. because somebody needs to be responsible for representing our agenda. Mm -hmm. We were talking a little earlier about how millennials often don't feel represented, but showing up is half the battle. Yeah. Like, how do we get people to show up and be a part of the process? And so for me, I just want to continue to be an ally for all and a champion for all. And so getting people to the polls has been my priority. So why do you think so many people are so hesitant on actually voting in this election? I, it's voter apathy. They just think their vote doesn't make a difference. Um, and oftentimes it feels like that, right? We watch the news. We see the things going on. I mean, I went into a funk after the Dallas thing when the police officer was only uh, given 10 years. Mm -hmm. I thought, how egregious. And what was more frustrating is that I thought there was an opportunity for us as leaders in Houston to get together and say, this will never happen in Houston. And so I polled people and tried to get people to come to the table and hold a press conference. And yeah, people were like, yeah, we can't do that. But that was such like a disappointment, I think, for the nation, especially for people of color, because we do have people that was in a position to represent us and really help that family. And when we seen them have so much sympathy for um, Ms. Geiger, it was just like, wow, what part of the fence are we really playing on? And I, the same thing with the presidency. When Trump got elected, the fact that the popular vote went to Hillary, but the Electoral College went towards Trump, right. I think it's really set a lot of people back. And I do, I'm going to say as a millennial, sometimes I feel like my vote doesn't count either. Right. Because I'm going to be honest, I didn't want to vote for Hillary or Trump, but I felt forced right. to pick one or the other. And even then, I felt like my voice wasn't being heard. Right. And... We're a part of a presidency where he feel like he don't have to follow the rules. Yeah. And he hasn't for four years. And it's so crazy because it doesn't even seem like four years has came and gone. I, I really feel like he just got elected last year. Right. And so much has transpired. And then the other half of it is I see a lot of black entrepreneurs. They actually support Trump because they believe that he's making the black community better, that there's more people that, owning, um, that own black businesses than ever before. Do you think that's Trump's... Um, did he help that? Or was it more so people saying, hey, we might need to solidify something for ourselves because we may not have anything to go to? I think that, um, and of course, this may be a black eye for me, <laughs> but I really think that people think their proximity to people who don't look like us lends them their privilege. Mm. And so I believe the black supporters believe their affiliation lends them privilege. And it doesn't, because you're right. They did it on their own. Those folks who have been successful, Trump didn't put those policies into place. The things that have to do with business and all of the advantages that they're getting really was done by the Obama administration. Thank you for saying that, because people, oh. <laughs> it's true. They don't it want is. to give him credit, because the truth is the Obama administration didn't do anything for black people, right? Like, if we want to call a spade a spade, yeah. he didn't... He didn't call, do any calls to actions. One of the things I wish he would have done, because he had so much swag and so much love, is just for him to say, look, black people, I need y'all to clean up y'all communities. 
But I felt like if he would have just given us some clear direction that on every level people would have said, oh, you know what, you're right, the president said let's do this. He didn't do that. He had to focus on the high-level things because he was president, right? He doesn't, we don't want government involved in our day-to-day life, truthfully. Mm -hmm. Uh, But the things that people are benefiting from happen because he put it there. That's true. And one of the things we talked about yesterday at the dinner is when Obama first came, a lot of people blamed him for the unemployment rate and all these different things. But that was left from the Bush era, Absolutely. which he had to clean up those four years. And in the next four years, he came in and he instilled those policies. So once he left, he made it better for us to get education, to clean up student loans, Absolutely. You know, all these things. And Trump reaps the benefits because now they're in action yes. while he's gone. And I think people forget, you know, how it really works the structure of the government right. and if you're not educated or knowledgeable on it you'll start to feel like well Obama really didn't have our best interest but then you have to think about okay if Obama's already black and he came in saying well, we're going to focus on a black agenda well then is he leaving out everybody else and right. not making it inclusive right. and I think that may have been the issue he didn't want to feel like Absolutely. I'm just here for black people because we're the minority yeah we're the minority of the minority so yeah it, So it's such a conundrum Mm -hmm. because, of course, because we elected him, we wanted him to do more. Uh, But look where we are now. So where do you think we're headed? Just in the space of just watching the Democratic Convention, the presidency, like, how are you feeling? Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Do you have a practicing faith? I know this is a hard one. I don't even know how to answer that question. I know I love God and I believe in God. Yeah. Okay, so that's a good answer because I love God too and I believe in God. Um, and so I think that this is a faith walk for us. For those who have practicing faith, no matter who you, who is your God, um, because all the gods say yeah. the same thing, right? Whether you're Muslim or you're Jewish or you're Christian, um, this is a faith walk. Because any God just wants us to trust him more. And so although we're going through all these questionable things, the truth is all things work together. Mm -hmm. Like even all of this character building is making us think differently, making us act differently. It's a preparation piece. Um, But ordinary people do extraordinary things Mm -hmm. every day. So I think it's also a call to action that, especially for our communities, it's time to wake up and that we have to be responsible for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, We literally should be acting like our house is on fire. I always tell people, try holding your breath and counting your money. Mm -hmm. You can't. But we're in a state that if we don't do something... In our lifetime, we're not going to be able to breathe. Like, it's going to be like a movie where we have to wear those masks and y'all are going to have children that look that have frog lungs or some kind oh, no. of <laughs> mutated system yeah. because that's the path we're on. You know, everybody's waiting for somebody else to fix the problem. And so, yeah, I think, um, I think we should not be discouraged. I think that we are tired and there's all kinds of apathy. There's servant apathy and, you know, children apathy. We just, it's a lot. But at the end of the day, we still have a responsibility because we're here. Um, And for some of us, the same way you are amazing at being a radio personality and a local celebrity and how the owner here is a great entrepreneur and a businessman, I believe I'm a public servant, Mm -hmm. and so I want the opportunity to help lead and serve folks um, because that's my job. And so I would hope that um, other people see that as a value. Unfortunately, uh, we do have voter apathy, and it's early voting, and we the polls are coming up short. But uh, I want to encourage who is ever listening. So what can you tell us about the state of... um where Houston City Hall is today. I know you're trying to get in, but just being on the outside and seeing some things that need to be changed, what do you feel like is the first step that we need to take for the city? For the city, we have to figure out the finance business, right? I I hear Mayor Turner all the time talking about how he balanced the budget, but there's a lot of departments that are operating underfunded, like the Department of Neighborhoods, the same department that I created, operates at 40%. 
that means 60% of the work isn't getting done. Mm -hmm. uh, that's unacceptable when it is responsible for doing constituency services. So when we see heavy trash, when we see abandoned and blighted properties, all these code enforcement issues, they don't have enough people to even go out and do the work. Um, so I think that we need a uh, external audit in every department to figure out where the money really is um, and create a plan around that. That should be the first thing that happens during this next uh, session. In January, a mayor, all the council um, will come in, and, yeah, we need to figure out the money. Follow the money. Yeah. Now, on a personal level, how has it been for you? I know you said that the numbers are low, and I know it's probably in a challenge, but I'm sure that you can see, you know, just, just going out and seeing the communities, what has been the biggest challenge for you? Um, I have been my worst challenge <laughs> because as a candidate, there are some things that you have to do, right? For me, the hardest thing is picking up the phone and asking people for money. Yeah. That is so hard. Not because I don't think that they will support me, I just think that life is hard. I mean, we still have people recovering from Harvey. Mm -hmm. So knowing that we are spending millions of dollars on an election when people are hurting every day, that that's so hurtful. But then I've been encouraged to remember that if I can do all the things that I can do with no resources, imagine what I can do with the office, be, with being an elected official and having that political will. Um, and so I have to take the responsibility of making those fundraising calls um, seriously, even though it's a lot of work. Um uh, just yesterday, I was putting flyers out, and the St. Mary's had their annual gumbo fest and had tons of people out there, but I was out there um, putting flyers out on the car and um, met a family, and the mom said to her little daughter, she was four, uh, this is the lady we voted for yesterday. And I said, hi, you know, I kept going, but she kept saying, hi, hi. So I went back to talk to her, and... Um, Oh, my gosh. It brought tears to my eyes because I can see how she was looking at me with such hope and admiration. And, man, and that's why I'm running, because I want her to remember that moment and think to herself as she grows up, I could do that, too. And if we sleep on this election, we won't have any representation. I'm the only person of color, only Democrat of color in the race. And, you know, these, this two-party system is crazy, and I technically consider myself purple. But regardless whether I say I'm a purple candidate or an independent candidate, I'm the only one that looks like us yeah. and that shares our values and have demonstrated that I can act on behalf of all communities. Mm -hmm. And so we're missing an opportunity if we don't elect people like me. Absolutely. I don't know. I guess it's disheartening because so many of us, especially millennials, we want to support people who look like us. We want to put them in a position. But it just seems like we've had we've come through so many disappointments that I could just speak for myself and say, I just lost hope. You know? Yeah. When you cut on the news, it's nothing there that serves me. And it's nothing that serves people to look like me. And then, for example, with the um, Houston City Council, like, you're the only person of color within the district that you're running from. And I know Edward Pollard is the only person right. of color in his district. So then it's like, why are people not stepping up and trying to fulfill these positions? Why are they allowing the rich or the wealthy or people that's never even came in our community tell us how to control it? <laughs> right. But you hit the, the, hair, the nail on the head. So there is an inequity with money. Because this has been the hardest thing I've ever done. I thought this was a no-brainer. I was like, oh, psh, I got this. But think about it. I'm having to run full-time. Like, being a candidate is my job. I don't get paid for that. Mm -hmm. Right? So keeping my electrics, electricity on and paying your mortgage and all that good stuff still has to be covered. Not a lot of folks can do that. I mean, it is truly by God's grace that I have been um, allowed this privilege to offer myself but there are a lot of good people that would be great elected officials that just don't have the resource. However, that is why it is so important that millennials come together or that as 
people of color, we come together and have a unified agenda because together we're better and together we can support people in a way that they could be successful. But if we choose, again, to let other people try to fix the problem, there's a saying, when you're not at the table, you're on the menu. And we will continue to be on the menu. Absolutely. Well, we got to go to a quick break. But when we come back, I want you to kind of go back over your policies and what you really plan on doing for the city and any progress that you've made so far while running. We got to go to a quick break. But when we return, we will continue our show. Until then, you are listening to The Blackout, always shining a light on black excellence, activism, and culture on Afro Vibes Radio with your girl, Tequila. Hey, everybody. We're now back from the commercial break, and you're still tuned in into the blackout, shining a light on black excellence, activism, and culture on Afro Vibes Radio with your girl, Tequila. And we still are in the studio with the lovely Miss Catherine Flowers Garcia. So one thing that I want to get straight into is just a reminder of what your policies are and everything that you want to put in place. And if if there is anything so far that you have accomplished within the city that you want to tell us about. Absolutely. You know, on the heels of African Fashion Week, and International Fashion Week, uh, one of the things that uh, I really want to accomplish is creating a new industry where we take fashion, music, film, food, radio, television, um, dance, literature, events, venues, I can go on and on, all of the creative, creative aspects of our day and put it into one group and call it the cultural economy mm-hmm. and make sure that we are building out opportunities and creating capacities for the talented people in the world that live right here in Houston. I think about um, when we say diversity is a strength, we have over 147 languages spoken in Houston, over 100 consulates. We have the most creative people right here. Mm-hmm. We should have warehouses and uh, that makes textiles and fabrics and shoes and mm-hmm. just, we shouldn't have to leave the country to get the most beautiful things when we have those beautiful people right here. Mm-hmm. And so creating a new economy is a priority for me. Um, I have a daughter at Tulane who's a theater major. She's not even thinking about coming to Houston. And she's right, because how would she be successful here? Um, And so that is, again, a major priority. Uh, Starting in January, I will be launching a series of summits that will talk about what this looks like and getting people involved. But it can happen. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're going to build a soundstage to make sure that we're bringing movies here. Uh, The goal is to create an entertainment complex uh, so that, again, businesses and entrepreneurs and talents will have the spaces that they need in order to be successful right here in Houston. Uh, I also believe that we get in homelessness, and so that's a huge part of my platform. Um, We are band-aiding the symptoms of the problems and not treating the problems. And so even before running, I was working on that issue. I'm still working on that issue uh, with the Homeless Coalition Board of Directors and other agencies. We're coming together to talk about what are those solutions and where's the funding to make that happen. Because I would really like to see uh, more homeless shelters. Sometimes it bothers me when I ride around that Minute Maid Park area and they Mm -hmm. have Tent City. I mean, it's a great thing that they have tents, but they're still sleeping outside and I think if we advocated more for mental health a lot of people wouldn't be on the street because I feel like that's the symptom of why they're there absolutely so you point point on so if you have a mental health issue or an addiction homelessness isn't your problem Mm -hmm. and so making sure that we identify the problem correctly is half the battle because if we keep mislabeling it then we won't ever have enough resources to actually address the issues. Uh, Mental health is very expensive, right? In the country where medicine uh, costs your life, essentially, uh, that's a problem. And you know what's interesting? On the election ballot, I think it's proposition number six that they're asking us to vote for. They're saying um, they want us to give six billion, with a B, $6 $6 billion to uh, a foundation that does cancer research. Are you serious? Wow. When we cause cancer? But more than that, we didn't even take the Medicaid expansion. Or we have more people that are uninsured than any other state in the nation. Mm-hmm. You know what we could do with $6 billion? And so that's the things we can't sleep on. Because when we choose not to vote, we're voting. 
And so you have these people who are manipulating the system because they know we, we're not going to show up. And so even with homelessness, we know that mental health issues are a significant reason why people are sleeping outside. And you know what? There are some people who started off homeless and being outside has caused the mental health mm. issues. Um and so, but there are solutions. I would like to create some low barrier transitional shelters in every quadrant, not just shelters. It would be a campus that you can go and all of the resources would be there. And tra transitional housing would also be there. Um, and that we have to make it mandatory for people to check in. You know, oftentimes we're criticizing, criticized for creating hard policies because they said that we are criminalizing homelessness. But would you let your mother sleep on the sidewalk? No. So why do we think that it's okay that we let people sleep on the sidewalk or in public spaces? It's not acceptable. And so accountability is a part of um, the necessary piece to bring people to transition from crisis to solutions. So uh, in addition to that, I want to make sure that we have clean air and clean water. Climate change is a huge now part of that. Now that water, my... I don't mean to interject, yeah, no. but the water is such a big issue because I actually had somebody come here from the water company and they said that we had chromium-6 in our water, which mm -hmm. is actually a cause of cancer. Yep. And we have one of the largest medical um, cancer centers in the nation, in the world. And so for us to be causing cancer, yet they want to get um, $6 Money to million dollars for research, but they already have a big cancer facility. It's kind of like, why is it not already combating the issue as it is? Why right. do we have to put so much money into the research when we're causing the problem? And it shouldn't be too hard to see because look at our water. You can look at Galveston and tell if it's flooding, the water's probably contaminated. Right. A lot of it is coming through the sink. And if you don't have proper filtration system, you're consuming that daily. Absolutely. So like at my house, we just cook with bottled water because that's the safe. We don't have a filtration system, but right. It's the safest way for me to cook for my children. Right. Um, what do you feel like or who should be accountable for not having clean water here in Houston? That just that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So that is a municipal issue. Mm -hmm. um, other uh, cities, uh, municipalities and unincorporated spaces around Houston typically has a water board. We do not. Therefore, we need to be responsible for that. Um, but that's a piece that our representatives that you elect need to be a champion for and yeah, that's actually a part of my platform and a lot I talked about having these flowers that I invested so much money in having and then watered it from watered them and they died yeah. because our, our water isn't safe to drink and so yeah there are there is a consent degree growing around um and I don't want to belay the point clean water clean uh air making sure that our communities don't flood, public safety uh, is all a part of the platform that I want to be a champion for because core sustainable services mm -hmm. is at the minimum what we should be providing to folks. Yeah, you shouldn't even have to ask for that. We should be ensuring that that is provided to every community, not just some communities, but every community. Absolutely, and it's crazy to even consider that we consider ourselves, you know, this country that is so great with wealth and resources, and yet we don't even have clean water. Yeah. You know, it's, it's you, just We saw what me. happened in Flint, mm -hmm. but right here in Houston, we're sleeping on that. And people don't even know it. Right, right. Um, so look, you got me all. But again, <laughs> that's why I'm running. Because if you have a life, if you have children, if you are looking for work, why do you think it's, how do we expect people to be able to research this stuff or know this stuff? You need public servants that are dedicated to making sure that they're representing our constituents in their best interest. I'm committing that I would do that every day for, for our communities. Absolutely. And so one of the other things that um, I want to ask you, just on a personal <laughs> level, yeah. do you support or believe in global warming and climate change, which sometimes we see a lot of representatives, they say that they don't believe that that's something that exists. Oh, my gosh. Climate change is real, and we should be acting like our house is on fire. Uh, right now I run a campaign called the Moms Clean Air Force. Over a million people are involved in it. Mm -hmm. I encourage folks, you don't have to be a mom to be involved. But we have a great slogan, tell Congress to listen to their mothers. Hmm. Um, but uh, again, I encourage everyone to get involved. You just go to momscleanairforce.org. 
www.thefoundationsfoundation.org. Click join the force and we will equip you with the tools and all kinds of information so that you can also advocate for um, climate change. Absolutely. Well, you know, you definitely have my support because I do believe entertainment is a great value to the city. Absolutely. We have so much talent here. I mean, we practically won yesterday, Astros, Texans, and the Rockets. There you go. So, so we definitely need to make sure that we're cultivating people that are here because I do believe a lot of people are leaving the city for opportunity. Absolutely. Well, we have too much space here for us to even be leaving. And um, I went to Great Day Houston and the lady that's over the ensemble theater, mm -hmm. that was one of the things that she discussed is that it's been around for so many years and that they have black talent that go on the stage and they perform and they bring black talent here as well. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we, you know, we we really appreciate that and, and honor it because if we don't, then somebody else will take it from us. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So I look forward to everything that you're going to do just so they can learn more about you. Tell them where they can find out more information online. So any social media platform, the T-H-E Catherine Flowers and then Flowers for Houston is the website, flowersforhouston.com hashtag flowers for five hashtag I want flowers hashtag <laughs> bloom where you planted uh, but yeah the one of the easy ways for folks to support me like follow me on social media share my posts like it make comments um, because every time we do that you know it sends it out to the rest of the the world um, so that they can also learn but please vote guys go out pick your candidates know ahead of time there are some guides so chronicle has a guide league of women, women voters have guides so there are some some tools that you can use to figure out you don't have to be alone in trying to make the decision absolutely well thank you so much for coming back we so appreciate you and thank you guys for tuning into the blackout where we always shine a light on black excellence activism and culture with your girl tequila on afro vibes radio make sure to check out our facebook Look at Instagram pages at the Blackout AVR. And to stay up to date on our previous discussions and future events, please visit Afro Vibes Facebook and Instagram at Afro Vibes Radio, Twitter at Afro Vibes Radio with an S. And lastly, listen to us online at www.afrovibesradio.com or simply download the Afro Vibes Radio app on the Apple or Google Play Store. <laughs>